it feels so good when you can walk past a woman that, that is used to getting eyeballs and you just keep your eyes straight. Or you know what I do a lot of times? I just look the other way. I, I actively look away. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, first off, you've helped me save my family twice. The issue I'm having is that the more I conquer my demons, the harder I get hit. My lust is my weakness. I guess you can say the final boss. I used to be able to control my eyes from looking at the butts of other women in front of my wife, but now it's seemingly hard to control and resist as if my pilot in my mind is hijacked by the lust demon. Families break apart most of the time due to drugs, alcohol, or even domestic violence. In my case, I almost lost my family to my lust and uncontrollable feeling to look at other women's butts. <laughs> it's gotten so bad that even when my wife's family members are around, my eyes wander. My wife and I decided to control, uh, continue our relationship together. I love her in spiritual and physical form. We actually have a good relationship. It's me with the problem. Uh, my question is, what could I do to put a stop to my eyes wandering? I have the knowledge of why it's wrong, but it's like the moment it happens, that's when my mind uh, goes autopilot. Thank you, Elliot, for the help, wisdom, and spiritual righteous guidance. Um, that's funny that you asked this question because I was listening to a, a video today um, uh, by Jesse Romero. Check out Jesse Romero on YouTube. He's a Catholic, right? And he's got a he's got a, a, a show called uh, Virgin Most Powerful Radio, right? And then one of the you know Virgin meaning Mary, right? And one of the things he was talking about today is chastity, right? And he was saying that if you have a problem with pornography, you have a problem with you know like your eyes wandering, you know lusting. Uh, this is going to sound kind of strange, but his advice was to look at the bloody corpse of Jesus Christ. You ever seen these crucifixes and Jesus is there and is a bloody corpse. He's, he's, he's got blood dripping on him. When I heard him say that, I was like, ooh, I was like, why? And he went on to explain that when you when you meditate on that, you're meditating on the, the chastisement, the, the self-control of the body. You're looking at someone who has died to the flesh, to all things related to uh, pleasure, to all things, uh, all addictions, all neediness, right? All wanting, all weakness of the flesh. Jesus is the example of full sacrifice, is giving it all up. And so when, you're, when you find yourself, this is what he said. He says, if you struggle with lust, find a bloody corpse <laughs> right I, I i'm not making this stuff up this is what he said and i and it made sense when he said it and i was like hmm, if i struggled i would try it look at the bloody corpse and meditate on christ's suffering and by and by he says that you will be you will begin to renounce all your lusts right i think it'd be worth a try something that you probably may not have done before and something that makes a lot of sense to me. Meditate on that suffering. Meditate on the purification. That's a purification process. As a Catholic, when I pray the rosary, uh, you meditate on the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The entire rosary is basically the, uh, the gospel on beads. It's the Bible on beads. That's really what it is. And uh, when, we, when we meditate on Christ's passion, you the, the the first is contrition right it's, when we're meditating on the, on the passion we're thinking in terms of when he was in the garden of gethsemane and he was taking on all the sins of the world right that's number one number two is the, his scourging the whooping the whooping that he got right and when they scourge you back then they whip you they will put like little rocks and little like little uh shells on the end of the of the whipping tendrils so that it would tear your skin open right you have that you have the crown of thorns and then you have carrying the cross and the crucifixion. But focusing on the second of those, which is the scourging, is the bloody, is the tearing down, the tearing up, the, and the purification 
of the body. Each one of the mysteries, right? Each one of the mysteries that are associated with each one, each, uh, each phase of Jesus's life has a, has a, has a, has a fruit, has a virtue that's associated with it. Right. Like I said, uh, when he was meditating in the garden, it was, it was contrition. That's a, that's a virtue contrition, like knowing that you're wrong and just accepting that you're wrong and admitting that you're wrong. But the, the fruit or the virtue that's associated with the scourging is purity, 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 and purity. If you think of it in, in terms of what you're struggling with, this purity is being, you say, you know, spiritual, you kept using that term, spiritual righteousness. Anything of the flesh that inhibits the spiritual ascension dirties it and it needs to be purified. All emotional attachment, all pride, all lust, all pleasure, all things of the flesh. It's not that these things are evil in and of themselves, but we become attached to them. Right, like you become your eyeballs become attached to those those girls' butts, right? And you can't help it. And your eyeballs is just going, just going with them. So it's a matter of purifying that in you, and by meditating on the scourging, the bloody corpse of Christ. In this way, you develop purity in yourself. Another one too. I'm throwing a lot of Catholic stuff at you right now because, uh, in in the Catholic faith there are apparitions, right? Apparitions are basically where Christ or Mary, his mother, uh, speak to various saints throughout history, speak to various people, you know, they'll come and uh, deliver a message for mankind. Catholics don't believe that, that, uh, that the um, revelation has ever ended, right? There's still, Christ is still speaking to people. And, and so there's, uh, there is an apparition called um, Fatima, Fatima, right? Because this is where Mary showed up and she spoke to three little girls. And she said that more, sin, more people will go to hell for sins of the flesh than anything else. Impurity. And it's the things that you're dealing with. And it's because the world that we live in makes it so easily, accept, it's so readily available. Pornography. I was just complaining about Instagram the other day because every time I scroll through Instagram, now they have reels because I guess Instagram's trying to be like TikTok. And every time I scroll through Instagram, I see these girls shaking their butts, right? They're bouncing their butts and they're shaking their titties. And I'm like, I never signed up for any of those. I don't watch those, but they keep being suggested to me. So the world is constantly trying to make you impure, give you impure thoughts, right? And it's even worse when you're married, right? Because it's basically, it, you're, it's, you're basically cheating on your wife every time you think about another woman. Just remember that Christ even said that he said it's not even the man that does the thing. Right. He says that if you, the minute you think about it, you're already sinning. Right. It's not the man that killed the made the murder is the man that thinking about the murder is already sinning. It's not the man that sleep with the woman or cheat on his wife. But this man is thinking about it. It's already that's where Christ took it. Christ took it there because he was above the physical law. He was talking about the spiritual law. He says you got to control your mind. You control your mind. And so. Uh. The world makes it so easy, right? Even just like you're walking in the street and the way these women dress, it's immodest. It's immodest the way these women dress and they think that they're doing it for them, right? I dress this way for me, right? Not realizing that, no, you're not dressing that way for you because you would have never dressed that way if the TV, TikTok, and Instagram didn't tell you to dress that way. Netflix didn't tell you, if they didn't tell you to dress that way, you know, if all your friends weren't dressing that way, you wouldn't dress that way. And the reason why the, the the clothing has become more and more scandalous and scanty is because attention, right? And this is how women rule the world. Women rule our world with vagina power because men will do anything. We will destroy our lives, like you said. We will do anything for that vagina. Whoop, there it goes, right? For Just for a moment of pleasure, you could destroy your whole family. One moment of pleasure with some woman that, that is, does not, she could give two shits about you, but she would love to receive your attention. She would love to destroy your family, <laughs> right? Because it gives them a sense of power. It gives them a sense of power. to When a woman dressed that way and men is turning their head and, and, and they're looking, they, it's a sense of power. For men, it, it's the same way like for men when we make money, 
right? We get this sense of power. When we get attention, that's their currency. It gives them a sense of power. And so one of the things that, that has helped me, right? Because I'm no different than y'all, right? Like I said, my, I, I'm scrolling through Instagram and I'm like, I gotta stop. I'm like, whoa, what is this? This titties bouncing. Whoa. And then I realize what's going on. That's a little different when it's a screen because it's a one way thing. And you could just, with the screen, you got to just stay away from it. Just block those. I'm learning how to block them. Somebody says, you got to actually click the video and then you got to hit, I don't want to see this anymore. So I got to make sure I go do it. But when it comes to women out on the street, I got this sort of sense about me now, which is maybe I'm getting old and grumpy. But I got the sense about me now that when I see a woman dressed like that, I get mad at her. I'm like, bitch, you ain't get my attention. You ain't getting my attention. You're not getting what you want. Because if I turn, I'm giving you satisfaction. That's what you do when you give, when you turn your eyes, you're giving these women satisfaction. And she don't deserve no satisfaction. She does not deserve an ounce of satisfaction from me. You're not going to get the satisfaction of me turning my head, looking at you, especially when my wife is here with me. But at all, ever. It feels so good when you can walk past a woman that, that is used to getting eyeballs and you just keep your eyes straight. Or you know what I do a lot of times? I just look the other way. I, I actively look away. I'll just walk and I'll look away. Boom. I don't want to say hi. I don't want to meet your eyes. I don't want to give you not an ounce of my attention. Look away. So look away from these hoes. Just look away and look at a bloody corpse of Jesus Christ. Just think about that. This, it makes sense when you think about it. It's taking your eyes away from that which it which it lusts after and put it on that which chastises it, reminds it, purifies it. See that sacrifice in Christ. And every day that you turn yourself away from looking at these women is another day that you sacrificed. It's another way that you walk the narrow path like Christ, right? It's not an easy thing to do. Like I said, this world's out to get you. It's out to trick, trick you. These women are out there to manipulate you. Don't let them win over you. You win. You win. Right? And don't do it for your wife. Right? It's not for her. That's the other thing, too. We got to recognize as men, you're not being chased or you're not being loyal. You're not having, uh, you know, being, being honest with your wife. You're not, it's not any of that is, is not for her. It's good for her, but it's first for you. It's called self-control. I'm in control of my eyeballs. I'm in control of my lust. I'm in control of my body. And if it don't listen, whoop, it gets a whooping, right? You can even, back in the day, they used to do like self-flagellation. I'm not saying you need to self-flagellate, like whip yourself, but you could punish yourself. You could punish yourself for, for doing, for, for every time you turn your eyes, right? People have this thing where like if they curse, they give their friend a dollar, right? Like every time I say a swear word, I'll give you a dollar. Every time you turn your, every time you turn your head on something, say 10 Hail Marys right then and there. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. 10 times, 10 times, do that, right? <laughs> every t and guarantee you stop. I was... I was listening to another podcast. This guy was talking about, I don't remember who, what the context of it was, but he, uh, oh, it was about him. He was using the, Lord, the Lord's name in vain, right? And he promised himself to stop, to never ever say the, Lord, the Lord's name in vain again. You know, like when people go, oh my Jesus Christ, right? I'm not using it in vain. I'm using it as an example. But people will, will say stuff like that. And he wanted to stop. He resolved to stop saying it. And so uh, what he would do every time he, he caught himself saying that, he would drop to his knees. Boom. He dropped to his knees and he would say, uh, our father, right? If you, right? And, and anyway, as the story goes, he was, in, he was a warrior. He was in a battle, right? And uh, like guns were going off, like bullets started dropping or bombs started dropping around him. And he goes, Jesus, right? And he, so he used the word, Lord's name in vain. As he dropped to his knees, brrr, bullets sprayed right over the top of his head, killed everybody in his platoon except him. Boom, because he dropped to his knees. 
There was a grace associated with the penance he gave himself. There's grace associated with giving, with punishing yourself, giving yourself penance. So every time you, you notice you find yourself doing that, give yourself a little punishment, right? Give yourself a little penance. And there's a grace associated with it because it lets God know, hey, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And if you just keep trying, you don't give up, don't stop. It requires vigilance, bro. I know to train your eyes requires vigilance. And sometimes we just weak. But don't give up. Don't stop. Keep going with it. It's totally worth it. It's worth it, man. And on the other end of it, first of all, you're not missing out on anything, right? A lot of people will listen to this and they'll be like, oh, Elliot, you are a, what would you say, like a uh, prude or something, right? You're not missing out on anything by not looking at that. What are you missing out on? That's like seeing Christmas and can't spend it. My mom used to say that. Why am I going to look at that? And it's not like you're going to get anything out of it except for the, the simple pleasure of placing your eyes on a pair of boobs. But, but even still, it takes away from you more than it gives you. You're not missing anything. You're giving up something that's worth giving up. Sometimes people don't want to give certain things up because, because there's a benefit to it. There's no benefit. There's no benefit at all. You're, when you have self-control, you're taking your power back. There's only good things that will come as a result. And so that's it, man. I know there was a lot. I threw a bunch of stuff out there at you. Um, get yourself a bloody crucifix and meditate on it. Meditate on the suffering and the purity of Christ. And when you catch yourself losing self-control and you turn your head, you turn your eyes, drop to your knees and pray. I guarantee you after a certain amount of time, you stop doing it. Hold yourself to that. Only You're the only one that could do it, though. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where, among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.